Almost two years ago to the day, I uploaded a video to my YouTube channel in which I presented the S4 Mini to you. That day was a milestone because I was actually able to hold in my hand what I had been working on for years and years. I was terrified. I had no idea if you guys were gonna like that little piece of my soul. I had no idea if the product was gonna flop after stretching so far financially. It probably would have tanked me. The S4 Mini was, is a crazy idea. It required a ribbon cable long before the use of which was accepted by the enthusiast mainstream. It also required the use of DC-DC power supplies, which other case manufacturers wouldn't wanna to touch with a 10-foot pole. It was built for no compromise on quality which after all the other expenses left little to no room for profit. But I'm so blessed to be able to say that today I stand here grateful to you guys for the success that is that mini project. So to commemorate that last introduction, I'm in the same spot as I made that video, wearing the same shirt. Uh, yes, I, I've changed it since then and the same hat. The production value for this video is going to be low. You're gonna hear trains and sirens and cars and boats in the background and the lighting's probably not the best but I wanted to use this scene to commemorate that day two years ago. Now, I didn't get here alone. I have friends and family, especially my wife, to thank, but I wanted to spend this time to thank you guys. I know this is a little cliche, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Small form factor is your hobby. It's what you use to get away from the hard day at work and just the hard stresses of life. And the fact that you get to share that hobby with me and I get to be excited with you and we get to plot and plan out your build together. I mean, I've answered literally thousands and thousands of emails and I've gotten to know some of you very well. And I've actually got to learn about quite a few of you past your hobby, about your joys and your sufferings. And it's been absolutely magnificent to share hearts with people all over the world. I know, again, this sounds corny, but I truly mean it. My passion isn't small form factor design. It's not chassis design. It's not making computer cases. I know that my passion is sharing this joy with other people, with walking with you. And these past two years have been a true honor and a pleasure. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. The S4 Mini was never meant to be a production chassis. It was more of an art project to kind of prove to myself that I could make, to turn a a mod into a production level chassis. But the opportunity to make a personal connection with you is not something that I am going to give up. So that's why I'm here today. I'm closing the chapter in a book, but I'm opening up another one and I cannot wait to write it with you. So for the news, starting today, I will no longer be selling the S4 Mini on my website. I have been invited to an incredible collaboration called SFF Lab. The SFF Lab concept is for artists to get together and to collaborate, to share ideas, to share resources and produce better stuff with other members. The new SFF Lab website features legendary products such as the Dan A4 and the Encase M1. It will also be home to some of the new products from our community, such as Compaq's awesome new Dynamo Mini and Dynamo 360. I'm extremely humbled to be part of this group, but even more than humbled, I'm excited because it's gonna bring you guys so many benefits. The first benefit is a global reduction in shipping costs. As an SFF Lab collaborator, I'm gonna be able to ship my products to all corners of the globe fast and affordably. This is gonna save my customers tens of thousands of dollars in the first run alone. Many of you guys are international and the price to get you an S4 Mini has been absolutely staggering because of the shipping costs. I am so happy to be able to drop ship from the factory to your door at a much reduced rate. Plus this run, I'm subsidizing some of it to make it even cheaper for you. Thanks to SFF Lab, Dan, AKA Wahaha on the forums, shipping is gonna be so much less than it has been with international customers paying pretty much the same as my USA customers. The second benefit is in manufacturing. As many of you guys know, the Dan A4 is made by Lee and Lee, which is a legend in the computer chassis manufacturing world. As part of the SFF collab, I was introduced to them and I'm going to be manufacturing and shipping through them on a regular basis from now on. Changing manufacturers was scary for me, terrifying for me. I needed to be sure I could get an excellent, consistent product from Taiwan, so I ordered tons of prototypes from them. I actually worked with several customers, thank you very much, you know who you are, and I actually shipped them products that were made from Taiwan to them to check against the other products that I had been putting out that were manufactured here. I need to be sure that the NFC system scrutiny for quality was going to be met overseas and delivered here. I'm not only satisfied 
but I am thrilled at the results. Lee and Lee is going to be doing the quality control, which is something that I had to do before, and that took up tons and tons of my dollars and my time, hundreds and hundreds of hours packing these boxes and shipping them to you. This is gonna save me so much time that I'm gonna be able to make more minis, design more products, and do more cool stuff, and maybe even get some sleep. Now, as for value, cost is a major concern for most of you. This is one of the major areas of feedback that I have received over these past two years. Josh reduced the cost. Now, my vision for the Mini has always been about luxury, luxury quality. I'm building an heirloom product. I don't wanna make something that is cheap. There are other products that fill that gap very, very well. So cheap is not something that I really want to aim for but I do want to find a price point and I want to deliver the absolute best product for that price point. I want it to be built to the best degree. I want to have the highest value. And value is something I've been hyper-focused on delivering. So from now on with the purchase of a Mini, I'm going to be including my Silaflex riser. This riser usually had to be purchased separately and it cost you $35, but now it's included. I'm doing this at a great expense to me because I want you guys to have the absolute best fit for the S4 Mini. The Silaflex riser was developed for the S4 Mini. It's the smallest, most compact riser. It features excellent performance and cosmetically, I love the way it looks, but you guys have been asking for it to come in black and so my manufacturer has actually developed the technology to deliver that to you. There are many great risers out there, but there's also a lot of bad ones. There's only one riser that was developed specifically for the S4 Mini. I hope this removes some roadblocks for you to be purchasing an S4 Mini and getting something that you can use pretty much right out of the box. The next major benefit as part of the SFF Collab is availability. Availability has been a tremendous thorn in all of our sides. It pains me so much to not have a product that you can order and have delivered to you within a reasonable time frame. The pre-order time has lasted typically about a month but then you have to wait three months, four months, sometimes even six months. Sometimes my runs are so short, they sell out really quickly, and that just leaves everybody frustrated. With this collab, I'm going to be able to purchase a lot of minis. Not only that, they're gonna be constantly being manufactured and shipped out. So that means after the pre-order up is for this time, just to get us launched, there's gonna be continually minis available. That's the plan anyway, and I really hope that it works out, and it looks like it's going to. Being able to ship to you quickly after you order is a huge burden off my heart, and I'm sure it's exciting news for you, and for those of you who've had to suffer through my notorious waiting list in the past. I'm sorry, I really am. So shipping, manufacturing, value, and affordability are the four major things that are gonna benefit all of us from me joining this collab. I hope that if I ended this video here, this would be really exciting news, but I have more exciting stuff to show you, so hang in there. My company's name is NFC Systems. NFC is about design and custom service, a truly unique experience, not from Concentrate, hence the name, but it was kind of weird that I was selling off-the-shelf products under this brand. So I've actually come up with a name, Skyreach, and this is going to be the name for all my off-the-shelf products from now on. It's my product line. And with that intro, I am proud to introduce to you the Skyreach 4 Mini. This new Mini shares the same initials as the S4 Mini Classic, S4M, but now when you go to search for it, you won't be swamped with Samsung products. All the Minis produced as of yesterday will now be called the S4MC for Skyreach 4 Mini Classic. And I want you guys to know that I love the S3 Mini and the S4 Mini Classic. I love how these two chassis are something special for my customers who purchase them. They consider them heirloom cases, and I hope that the introduction of this new revision is going to only increase their value for owners that invested in them. I want them to treasure those handwritten serial cards. Every now and then I'll still be selling a special edition S4 Mini Classic and even the very rare S3 Mini. So while they're not going to be gone forever, they are going to get much harder to get a hold of. Now at this point, you probably want me to shut up and talk about the Skyreach 4 Mini. Let's do this. So if I could only leave you with one bit of information, one line, it's that the S4M and the S4MC are sisters. The S4M is not the S5M. I wanted to, no, I needed it to have the exact same soul and purpose of the S4MC. With all the amazing suggestions you guys have offered me over the past two years, this revision could have morphed into an entirely new chassis. The S4M, in terms of liters, is slightly larger. It's 0.4 liters larger to be exact. 
Now, that sounds like a lot, but in practice, if you were to lay an S4MC with one of my 3D bezels installed over the S4M, they would appear exactly the same size. They practically are, at least on the outside. On the inside, the S4M feels like the opening scene of Sound of Music. Building in the S4M is now easier than building in some ATX chassis. I'm not even kidding. My last 1080Ti build took me six minutes. You'll want to spend a little longer if you don't purchase a set of Skywire cables off my website for the sake of perfect cable management, but the process really could not be easier. Last week, I released a how-to video of sorts on installing a 1080Ti in an S4MC, and I recommend you watch it for a comparison. In the S4M, you remove four screws for the top cover, four screws for the front bezel, and you can install the 1080Ti Mini as easily as in an ATX chassis. You can even plug in the PCIe connectors with the card installed. These are things only an S4 Mini Classic owner would really understand. So how come the S4M and the S4MC are practically the same size on the outside, but on the inside, the S4M seems so much roomier? Well, it's the white elephant in the room, the wraparound bezel. The luxurious wraparound bezel was a huge part of the S4 Mini Classic's luxurious looks, its cost, and how much room it took up in the chassis while at the same time being seamlessly integrated. With the wraparound bezel gone, it allowed the S4M to grow internally and easily fit the 1080 Ti, the 1080, and the new Zotac 1070 Ti. And as we'll talk about in a bit, a few more things. Now I know that many of you, well, I know that all of you, including myself, are sad that the wraparound bezel is going away, but it really is for the best. For one, I want to respect the S4 Mini Classic and its rarity. I think the wraparound bezel is special and that chassis is special. Most of my customers who were purchasing the S4 Mini Classic and all of my customers, except for one who purchased a full build from me, ordered the 1080 or the 1080 Ti this year. On top of that, a lot of my forum friends were asking for the next revision or next chassis that I made to fit these cards without any modding. It used to be that you had to purchase a really expensive custom bezel from me in order to fit in one of these cards, and it still took some effort. I didn't want to do a revision of a chassis and pull an EA and require you to purchase another bezel to fit these cards when most of you are buying this chassis to stick those cards in. It just didn't seem right. But there is a second benefit to moving to this 2D bezel. It will be much easier to mod at home with home tools. It's also way easier for me to mod in my shop. And I wanna be able to make custom made to order carbon fiber bezels that fits your exact needs. So you don't have to buy something that's just off the shelf, but you can have the own cutouts how you want it. So if we were to add up the inclusion of the ribbon cable, the huge reduction in shipping costs, and the fact that you no longer have to purchase a bezel in order to fit in the cards that you want, the S4M's cost is dropping pretty rapidly compared to the S4MC. Now let's talk about the sky slots. I consider my trademark feature to be my sky slots. I've talked about them before in the past S4 Mini videos I've made, but a lot of my time, thinking, and money is tied up in them. They allow for a massive amount of air to freely and quietly flow through them. Their spacing and size has been computer modeled by actual engineers who are good at what they do, and they help me with them to ensure maximum strength against bending. The semicircle staggering helps reduce EMI emissions, though this is probably not a concern for any of you. And last but not least, they provide mounting points and are VASIP pattern compatible. The S4M has more of them. Many of you love the horizontal look of the S3 and the S4MC, and I wanted to make the horizontal heat performance of the S4M even better. With many motherboards, the CPU heatsink can dump heat right out the side of the chassis. If you add some feet, like the mini feet on my website, your hot GPUs can get the air that they need. And I'm really glad to be partnering with other case manufacturers on the small form factor website in order to let them use my sky slots and do some co-branding. The TLDR on this is that the S4M vents even better than the S4MC, which could not really come at a better time with the release of the 1080 Ti and people trying to stuff in the 8700K and even some i9s. Now let's talk about power supplies. With the market ever changing and the ingenuity of my customers, I can't possibly cover every combination, but here are a few gold standards. The height of the S4M and S4MC are identical, so no change in supported cooler or RAM height. The HD Plex 400 is still fit between the inner chassis frame rails. Velcro, thermal tape, screws, or bubblegum blobs are not needed or recommended to mount the HD Plex 400. 
So throw all that past information out, please. The chassis still has the same 11 millimeter aperture with oval mounting holes for the HD Plex and Pico DC jacks, and is very easy to get to. It requires zero modding for oversized GPUs. This is a much requested change, probably the number one on my to-do list, and fitting this in without bloating the chassis was a challenge. Next to the DC jack aperture is a new cutout for screw and C8 connectors. I'll be selling these on my NFC website. One of my absolute favorite S4 Mini builds was by Compact, who pioneered the brickless S4 Mini Classic. There is now mounting built into the side braces of the S4M for the HD Plex 160 AC-DC power supply. You can couple this with Compact's own Dynamo Mini plug-in unit. Wire up the C8 connector, and you can have a mod-free brickless mini that can easily support a 65 watt CPU and a 1050 Ti, one of my absolute favorite combos and what I'm running right now in my office. I play a lot of PUBG now, and with screen scale set to 70 and the graphics turned low, which helps my old eyes anyway, I can get over 60 FPS with a screen resolution at 2560 by 1440. For Fallout 4, Blizzard games, and Civ 6, the 1050 Ti is more than adequate for eye candy and frames, and has plenty of CUDA cores for the applications I use that take advantage of it. I'll also note that you can use the 160 AC DC with any normal sized graphics card. So anything that doesn't extend past the PCI bracket, it will fit. So you don't have to use a low profile 1050 Ti, which will save on that annoying noise from those small fans. There are of course other configs that the S4M supports too. If you combine Compact's Dynamo Mini and the Dynamo 360, you can do naughty things like power a 1080 Ti, a 91 watt CPU, and reduce cable clutter and coil line. He's releasing a coupling agent shortly that even lets you combine two HD Plex 300 AC DC units into one brick, but that's voodoo talk for another video. And while I'm on the subject, no, the S4M is not compatible with the HD Plex 300 AC DC, but I wouldn't say never because you guys are pretty clever. Flexibility. This is where the S4M design gets to be really fun. You guys were really clever with how you mounted various things in the S4MC, particularly fans and drives, so I want to support tons more configurations out of the box. There are now 13 different places to mount the sky bracket, which in case you aren't familiar, that's the bracket that's designed to mount 120 millimeter fans. The drive bracket has been completely redesigned and it's now called the sky bracket duo. It still supports two 9mm 2.5 inch SSDs with a 1080 mini installed, but it also has mounts for two 92mm fans. Why? Well, I'll let you guys figure it out. Just like you figured out removing the fans and shroud off of some GPUs so you could put two Noctua 90mm fans over the heatsink for improved and quieter performance. The Sky Bracket Duo has five mounting positions. Some are just for your own sick creativity, but others allow for the installation of the HD Plex 400 fans over your GPU heatsink, or drives with easy access to your Dynamo 360 or DC jack wiring. I figured more mounting points is better than less mounting points. Continuing on with flexibility, let's move on to what's behind the bezel. The GPU cutout is huge now, which is a nod to you modders to go nuts. You'll also notice that it's the perfect size in order to fit an optical drive behind. With the 2D bezel being so easy to mod, Putting in a slim slot BD-ROM is now possible, although I don't know why some of you want to do that still. It's almost 2018, guys. Next to the GPU aperture is another square cutout. This, my friends, is a mounting point for USB connectors. I might sell these on my site, but you can pick up USB 3 and even USB 3.1 Type-C connectors that fit these mounting points off Amazon. This is a much requested feature that I hate the idea of, so you'll have to do this yourself. I'm meeting you halfway, hippies. Next to the USB mounts are two 50 millimeter fan mounts. You could use this to cool off your Dynamo Mini, your RAM, or I don't know. I put them there because I could. You're welcome. The last cutout looks like the power button cutout on the S4MC, but bigger, because it is bigger. It's big enough to clear the nut on a 16 millimeter Bulgan switch, which means you can easily install the power button now without fiddling with the bezel and the chassis and trying to make sure that you install it first, you can just do it after everything else is built. Just stick it right in there. This update's simple, but I like it a lot. It was community suggested, so thanks. Lastly, there are mounting holes everywhere for who knows what. We'll come up with a reason to use them in the future. 
already have some accessories planned, including a boatload of new bezels, which will use the two side holes so you don't have to screw in four in the front of your pretty wooden bezel. And those little screw-in threads I use in the hardwood bezels are expensive, so two is gonna reduce the cost from four. So those are most of the new design features. This is just an intro video and it's already going pretty long, so let's talk about those later. Right now, let's conclude with design. The S4M has a new look to it, but I want it to be familiar. New is scary, I admit, and you might hate it, but if you give it a chance, you also might love it. I built up the confidence to even show this to you because everyone who has seen it in person, including several die-hard mini owners, have loved it. And when I look at it in person and hold it too, I love it too. I think it has turned out magnificent. I'm not a huge fan of symmetry, true, and this is absolutely apparent in my art mods, which you can view on the front page of my website. The S for a Mini Classic defies symmetry as well, but the symmetry of the S4M helps reduce costs, which pays for shipping subsidies, scaling up the run, par the risers, and the expensive custom tooling that Lee and Lee didn't even have that makes the Mini unique. Bins and curves with a perfect brush line finishing carrying over without tool marks, and the side braces that are perfectly folded without metal fatigue and hand epoxied for ultra strength, 1.5 millimeter thick aluminum construction for every piece, every part designed for strength, but yet a 330 gram weight reduction from the S for Mini Classic. I have two years and hundreds of minis of experience and thousands and thousands of emails from you guys to make sure that every millimeter counts. I want this chassis to be easier to buy, to be a pleasure to build in, and a joy to own. I want to be an invitation for you to meet me and for me to get to meet you, and I can't wait. Sincerely, with love, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Peace. Rim isn't. Could this train take a choo choo break? How many trains can run through my city in one day? There's already been tons of choo chooing earlier today. I feel like it gets louder and then softer and then louder again. The same train. I don't understand it. There's mice above me in that box, and they are also really loud now, so I guess that I'm thrown off.